Oh, so, oops, sorry. Let's turn you down on the mat and I'm showing you a black screen and it's gonna come on just in a sec. So I was playing around with the camera as well last night. Let's just get it nice and zoomed in. There we go. So the method is really, really easy. You're gonna be using Peyote Stitch to with size with size 11 and size um 15 seed beads to create an encasing around our little cabochons here and then what you can do you can either do a couple of different bail to it i quite like to do when i go across the back because then when this one sits on a necklace it sits like sort of the necklace just sits behind it and it becomes really really nice and pretty the other way you can do a little bail is to like sort of do a little flip bail at the back and then your necklace is going to sit above the pendant as well that's a really nice one to do now we have got uh, three different kits on the website so we got an iridescent blue an iridescent red and an iridescent and it's called an iridescent which is more like a white one i have swapped and let me just take you to the website very quickly going to show you i have swapped actually some of the seed beads because um when um we did these kits before the <laughs> the seed beads we had were um we didn't have the rose gold one and and I added the rose gold one in there so let's very quickly look at so you got three different options um iridescent blue iridescent red ir and the iridescent now each one of those um kits if I go in there it's gonna show you you get four of the larger cabochons eight of the smaller cabochons and you get two bags of size 11 and two bags of size um 15 seed beads so if you stroll down to the bottom of the page you can see watch which one of the seed beads i have chosen this one is a teal like an aqua teal and the nebula and it, it will go really really nicely together and if i pop back and go just into another color let's just go into this one the iridescent one and if i pop down to the bottom you can see I, again i slightly changed the seed bit so instead of having that color which is in the picture i have paired it up with the rose gold itself because i think it's going to look so much nicer with the rose gold so do let me know which one you want me to demo with so we got the blue we got the iridescent with the rose gold and i'm going to show you one more which is the iridescent thread now here i went a little bit more goldy and i added the galvanized red next to it so do the galvanized gold next to the red oh my god excuse me i need a sip of my coffee <laughs> Um, so again, those are the colors I have chosen for the pen and snap style. So do let me know which color you want me to demo with. They are really, really pretty. Now these cabochons are made of like sort of an acrylic material. So they're not glass, but they will, they will stay that sparkly like forever they are really really nice quality and i love them and i and i call these ones winter flowers because they they look like more like a flower but they more i guess like a, a star shape as well or or like a snowflake shape i just really really love it blue bees iridescent please um rose gold please rose gold we might end up with doing the rose gold yeah would you be able to shut that window now hun just when I came down, um, <laughs> said, yeah, can you open the window? I'm just so hot. I, I brought my jumper down as well. So we're going to do the rose gold as then. So in the rose gold, and I'm going to show you this in real life as well. So these are the four seed beads I have chosen to do rose gold. The This really, really nice cream color. And I added size 15, like a, a, a movie color in there. So you can really like, you know, just add that little bit of decoration in the middle with with the mauve colors so just really highlights the pendant itself so i'm just gonna grab a thread and needle and we're gonna get started so the thread i'm going to be using for this one is going to be double a because i will be working with the size 15s quite a bit at the end and i can make the bail with the size 15s as well so i want to have just a slightly thinner thread and just grab a needle out of my little hedgehog here. Actually, it's a mouse. <laughs> and we can get started. So I'm going to do the rose gold around it. I'll just pop these out of the way. And then we got a choice. We can either have size 15 
these really nice mauve color or we can use the size 15 the rose gold colors itself when we come to it you can let me know which one would you prefer so very quickly just going to thread my needle now there's a couple of different different size of cabochons in your kit so depending on which one you want to do there is a different number of seeds you need to pick up so let's do the smaller one so we can do we can hopefully then we can finish that um all the way So for the very first row, when you pick up, you're actually picking up row number one and row number two. I'm just going to see if I can have a little bit. That's the letter C jumped out. <laughs> These letters. I, I, I have, you know, like my sort of, I turned my table. So I had my lovely seed beads behind me and not even once the letters like, fallen down of my cupboard behind me now I turned it back so at the moment you can see the cupboard behind we turned it back yesterday and since I turned it back that is the third letter falling down so I don't know what's going on this <laughs> doesn't like the position of the table I don't like to be seen but um never mind never mind so as you first you need to pick up all your seed beads and just give me one sec let me just oh where did you go on so the first first two rows are going to be your oh, let's go back one so sorry one just what give me just one second oh there we go I just want, I know the number for the smaller one. I'm just going to very quickly pull up the instructions so I can tell you the number for the larger one. So the smaller one, you need to pick up 42 seed beads and the larger one, you need to pick up 62 seed beads. I just I didn't want to tell you the wrong number. I checked it last night. So when you're doing POT stitch, you're always working with even numbers. And I do check it because the amount of times I thought I counted the right amount. And then I, when I went back, I actually didn't. I had an extra bead or one bead less. And that's so annoying because then you have to take everything apart. So that's 10, 15, 20, so hard sometimes to talk and count at the same time 25 i usually do it like because i can see that i'm picking up five seed beads that's you can sort of just recognize with your eye so that's how i usually do it that's 30 35 and 40 oh i just pinged one 40 and two more so to get the right amount of because your cabochons can be all sorts of different sizes so to get the right amount around your cabochon what you need to do is to once you added your seed beads i'm going to take the seed beads right down and just I usually just go through the first seed bead to form a little loop now if I had too many seed beads then this circle would not fit on the top and let, let me just zoom in on these let me just go in more so you can see it better if I if this this was like for example 56 beads you would see the circle would be too big if that it was it wasn't enough then the circle would be too small and it would be sitting on the top of the cabochon so always check whichever cabochon you're working with that you got the right number of seed beads to start with so what we're looking for is just sort of a nice fit around it and then once you have your nice 
fit. I'm going to go around the all of these beads once to have a very firm base. I don't want to knot my beginning and end together. You could do, but then you run the risk to form a knot, form the, the knot formed uh, to move into one of the seed beads themselves and once they move into the knot the knot once the knot move into the whole of the seed beads it can block it and once it's blocked the seed bead you no longer can go through that one and with pot stitch it's really crucial to miss a seed bead and go through the next one so i'm just going to go all the way around all the way around I don't like to work right next to my tail, so once I came all the way around, I do like to just to come through the first maybe two or three seed beads, just sort of I'm working away from my tail. And by that, if I turn this and pull it, you can see as I'm pulling it, I can make it really nice and tight. So from here, I'm going to start peyote stitch and peyote stitch. Just move this down a little bit, sorry. There we go. So with peyote stitch, you always, you pick up a bead and then you miss a bead. Then you pick up a bead and then you miss a bead. So as I'm coming out of this seed bead, my, I, I like to work sort of um, going back anti-clockwise. So always sort of stitching away from myself. If you're left-handed, you might want to do the reverse, but it doesn't really matter what way you are starting on what way you're going. You could like stitching this way. It's what way is most comfortable for you. So I am gonna, as I'm coming out of that bead, I'm gonna pick up one seed bead. In fact, what I'm gonna do so you can really see it, I'm gonna get my second color here this lovely creamy color and we're going to do this row with this second color so you can really see what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll usually just sort of insert my finger in there and I'm going to pick up one seed bead. I'm going to miss one rose gold there and then go through the next one and pull this nice and tight. And that's just going to sit there. So once I added a seed bead, these this the seed bead next door is just sort of going to move along and they're going to sit side by side just sort of like bricks would sit um, on a building and then I'm going to go ahead and pick up another seed bead again I'm going to miss one and go through the next one and pull this up tight just like that and just sort of wiggle it so it goes, hold on one sec. I caught the thread. There we go. So this one, when I pull it up tight, you can see these two are gonna sit next to each other. I'm just have a look at the picture, there we go. And then I'm gonna turn it Pick up another seed bead, miss one, go through the next one and pull it nice and tight. And now this one going to sit again, pull that seed bead to the side and so along. I'm going to run all the way around, adding as one seed bead as I go. So I always miss a seed bead and go through the next one. Beauty stitch is a really lovely and easy stitch. And I absolutely love it. I did so many different things in peyote stitch. This is like a circular version of it, but you can do them straight and flat. And there is like two drop, three drop. There is so many different things you could do with it. Come on. There we go. Just keep going again. Uh, Camille is saying like the ring so uh, I was, I'll, um, t this is a peer to stitch ring as well we did it quite some time ago I actually I bought some beads home the other day because I want to do something like another ring and I just need time to sort of play with it I, I love it as well it was in my um, bedside table and the other day at the weekend I tidied up <laughs> and I found my rings so I started to wear them again 
I must start to wear my, I, I still haven't put my wedding ring back on. Because when, when I'm working with resin, <clears throat> I take it off. Because I don't want to get any resin or anything on there. And it's still upstairs in my jewelry box. I need to get it out and put it back on. Don't, don't tell Simon I haven't got it. <laughs> don't tell Simon at all. Ooh, let me just um, add myself in a corner here. There we go. So I'm just going to keep going around until I get all the way around. I'm probably about halfway around now. Oh, Lucy, I really hope you get better soon, lovely. Sending you big hugs and kisses. And if anything we can do, let us know. I'm just almost all the way around now. Right, let me know in the copper. Let me know in... I oh, hope you feel better, Linda. Is Linda feeling poorly as well? Um... I hope everybody is feeling poorly. Do I hope you? I wish you a very speedy recovery and get well soon. Right, going all the way around. Now, if you have any questions, please put a Q in front of your question so I can very easily identify it. If you have a tip, please put a T in front of your tips so again very easily we can identify it and if you're new today just say hello in the comments let us know where you're watching from because we have people watching from all over the world i sort of so baffled by the power of the internet that i'm here in the uk and then people can watch from australia from hawaii from america from everywhere Finland. There we go. Let me just pull this up. We're almost all the way around. Right, so what I'm making, I am going to encasing the cabochon and hold on, let me just my thread is naughty today. I'm going to be encasing this cabochon and then we can decide if you want to turn it into a pendant or if we, in fact we want to go ahead and make a few of them and link them together to make a necklace or a bracelet. So this is, we're going to encase it just like that, front and back, and then we can either add a, a, a bail to the back or we're going to go ahead and we're going to link them together to form a necklace or a bracelet. I really do love these this technique. I love beauty stitch on any day, but I think it just makes a really nice and pretty stitching around your cabochon. Now there's other ways you can embezzle your cabochons. You could glue it down on a, a base mat base fabric. Let me just get my bracelet off because my thread is keep getting caught in the toggle part of it. Ooh. Naughty me, I just added the wrong color. I don't know what's going on, it's Tuesday today. We did have a very late night last night again. We are watching the third season of um, something what we started to watch and it's always like, oh, just let's just film one more episode, one more episode and before you know it, it's midnight. <laughs> so Simon, we both said this morning like, Today, we're going to go to bed very, very early. Right, so when I got all the way around, so I'm just going through my last bead, I need to step up. So, the if I let's let me pull this through. So, now I'm every is even, every other bead has got a bead sitting next door onto it. So, now what I need to do is a step up because I no longer want to work on row through. I, I want to go into row three. So I'm just going to go to the first ever bead I added and pull this through. And I am ready to add another row onto this one. 
now i'm gonna go and um shall we add shall we let's let's add another one of this lovely beigey color and this row is so much easier and from here it's really, really going to be easy because you can see which beads you have to go through you those beads are standing out from like you know when, when we pulled them and, the, and they went sort of side by side so now i really know very easily which bead i have to go through and i'm going to do exactly the same method i did in a row before and this is the last row we're using size 11s so after this we're going to go down to size 15s but i'm very quickly going to run around and add and you can see because those beads are sticking out i'm running around and going around so much quicker that i did the third row so because when you pick up your seed beads the 40 Two seed beads we picked up that was your first and second row and then we added our third row and this is the fourth one and it's so easy to add now because those beads are sticking out Liam would you mind just to close the door for me please I can hear little feet so coming down the stairs and walking around And I'm just going through. I'm almost all the way. I still sort of hold it around my finger. You can, if you can keep, keep a tight attention because that really helps. And I'm just gonna go all the way, run all the way around as we go. So let me know in the comments if you've done POT stitch before and let me know in the comments if you bezeled a cabochon before and if you bezeled the cabochon before that just say yes and what did you use did you use netting did you use embroidery so you stitched it down to a backing fabric did you use POT stitch what did you what have you done um how have you embezzled or beaded around the cabochon there is so many different ways we can do it let me know what your which one is your favorite. And I'm just keep going around and almost all the way around. And then we're gonna start adding our 15s. So it will be just pop through this one. I'm just gonna get that tail out of the pull that tail out of the way. Just like that, making sure this is nice and strong. So what color shall we add next? We could add either, I think rose gold 15, or we could add the mauve 15. One of them is obviously is gonna be the back of the pendant, the other one is gonna be the front. I th I, I'll per perhaps, so I'm just adding the last bead here, and in the same stitch as I'm adding this bead, I'm going to go through and step up and go through the next bead. So I'm going through two beads here. The only thing I have done this from a, a, a kit, I think it was POT. Yes, I bezeled with POT stitch. I made a pendant and bracelet and a pair of earrings all to match. Jen is saying, Camille is saying, I love POT stitch. Faye is saying, I love POT stitch as well. She's done POT. Mauve, let's add the mauve on it then so you can really see what we're doing. So I'm just going to pull these beads to the side and get some of these mauve ones out. So again, we're going to do very same thing what we did before. Going to go ahead another another round of beads, but this time we are going down in size. So this time I'm adding the mauve ones. Just like that. And I'm going to go all the way around. So I'm going to do, I like the way, you can either do the front of the pendant first or the back of the pendant. Um, sorry, cabochon. It doesn't really matter in, in what way you go first. Sometimes I like to 
have, do the, the front first because that will be your more even side and you will pull it as you're pulling your beadwork to the back. So if you're going to do the front first, then you need two rows of this size 15s. If you're doing the back first, then you're going to do three rows of the size 15s, just sort of in the back, you really want to pull it together. Right, my thread is keep twirling around, so I'm going to straighten it. I'll just get undo that little knot there. So what sometimes can happen when you're doing your beadwork, and let me just cut to this main camera as well. So some, what sometimes can happen that your thread gets twisted around. So hold your needle up, index finger and thumb, just pull, pull your thread through your index finger and thumb. And you can see as I'm going down, this is really twisting around all the, can you see it's all, that's it. And then I'm gonna do one more time just to get rid of any twists. And if your beadwork is spinning when you pull it down, then you know that you had your thread was twisted and that's why, that's why you're getting knots. That, that's why the thread is, is being naughty. So let's go back to this one. And now when we add our beads, hopefully we're not going to our thread is not going to try to see. It's so much nicer to work with. It wasn't trying to knot up. So you're going to do it, continue doing your POT stitch and you're going to pick up a bead, miss one and go through the next one. You can do all sorts of different colors. But this is this is the basic sort of point of it, the ba basic method of how to encase cabochons. So you're going to start with a size of beads, do a POT stitch, which would which make you like a straight tubular. If, if I didn't change the size of the seed beads, it would make like a tubular hollow beadwork going all the way around and round and round. But because I'm changing the size and I'm going down to 15s, I'm closing that tube. Obviously, it's going to be a very, very thin tube. The edge of it around the cabochon. And that's how the cabochon gets to sit inside nicely and securely. And once you stitch it on there, you won't be able to take it out. I'm almost going all the way around. Lucy saying, I think I got a couple of beauty projects from one of the USBs left to do. Love learning all these different stitches. Oh, there I love them too. There is so many different ones. I think this is really my I love all sorts of techniques and I love doing wire work and I love doing the trees and I love doing everything because like I'm just I, I, any technique, I'll give it a go. Or any, any crafts, I guess. Not even just the beading, but mainly beading. I'll I'll give it a go. But Stitching, I think, is my some I write at the end and just added my last bead. So I'm gonna step up. And can you see already that those beads are pulling my circle tight today? I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna go through that next size 15 and I'm gonna add another row of 15s here. So any technique I'll give it a go, but Stitching is my is my my main love, I guess. So this one is reducing the circumference of the beads again. This another row of fifteens, and then actually let's let's call this at the front, or we could call it the back. Doesn't matter, and. Um, And then we are ready to pop the cabochon in it and start working on the back. Ilan um, is saying, I'm just learning POT, never tried it going in a circle. Um, in POT doing cabochon, we'll try eventually. I made one using a square, Riverly 
a bead club and I attended it by got stuck stitch in in the ditch a bit and it was not on it's another project half done it looks like mirror technique oh yes I've got so many half done projects here but just experiment just go back another day and just try to have a look that um try to have a look and even for me when I'm trying to work out and I've been beading in so many years but even for me like I try to work something out and like you know I, I can sit there all day or, or all afternoon and just trying to work something out where I want it to work and it doesn't work and it just does not want to work it just does not want to come to me <laughs> the design just doesn't want to come to me and in those cases on that, that situation what I do I put it to the side and I go back a week or two later with a fresh pair of eyes and then it's just sort of you just get it like that because like it, it, there, there is definitely something I think you in England you have a saying as well or we have an England is saying actually I should say be because I lived here for over 20 years now that um you have a sleep on it is that the right one do let me know in the comments that is is that the saying because in Hungarian that's what we would say like you know have a sleep on it and then you see it tomorrow have you got that in England? Let me know. I think it's the same. I, th I think you say as well, have a sleep on it, like when you're trying to decide something. So that's that's what sometimes it beading and learning beading, that, that's what you need to do. Just have a sleep on it <laughs> and, and then start again or decide or have a look at it tomorrow with a fresh pair of eyes. I start something, then then leave it to go back and see if I remember how to do it without looking. Oh yes, and then so many ways. And as I said this the other day actually, like because we released the USB number four in November, but that USB was supposed to release in April, back in April. But with what happened last year, like we really had to change very very quickly in March, and we started the live, and the focus is shifted for a little bit away from the USB. So I worked the majority of the stitches were worked out. I think there was only like two or three projects what I needed to do. But what happened is that I worked one of the projects out, which was the the beaded star with the gem duo beads and I put it to the side and I forgot all about it and when I went back into the autumn <laughs> I, I reworked it the same same star <laughs> and I'm, I'm pleased to say I did it the same way in the autumn as well but I completely forgot about it that I did it and it's not only just later I found the samples themselves that I had it done right so I got two rows so that's like if you show you from this like can you see that's curving in so now I can go ahead and I can add this little cabochon into it and show you. So the size 11s will sit around it and the size 15 will be sit slightly on the top of it. So before I do and start to really pull it, I am going to, I'm going to go around this inner circle just one more time. And each time as I'm going around, I'm going to pull just like a little bit tighter, just to really tighten up this inner circle, make those beads sit together nicely. And then I'm going to weave my thread to the other side. And on the other side, I think I'm going to grab the size 15s, the rose gold color. So the back of it will be rose gold. And then we could do what we could do is to do the bell in rose gold as well on the top. And then it will just will bring all the colors together what we added to around the cabochon. Yeah, yep. Yeah, just see sleep on it. Marine is saying yes. Uh, Carol is saying as well. I think it's so interesting that like all, um, I mean, I always speak Hungarian and English. I don't really, I dibble dabbled into Spanish and, and we all had to learn German at school and Russian the way back in primary school. But it's so interesting that in loads of languages, like you have the very, very similar, if not the same saying. I just got a knot on here. Go away, knot. But, um... Like it's slightly different. So if, if like, if I translate kettle into English, like kettle, what you would boil your water with, in Hungarian, it's called the water cooker. <laughs> so this is so funny <laughs> because 
then we've like first got together with Simon, I would say to him, oh, can you turn the water cooker on? And he would not know what I mean. But then there's so many different sayings, which are like very similar, but different. And I just, I love it. Like, like in Hunger Hungarian, we have got an expression, which we say like, you fall fallen to the other side of the horse, which I use it so much. And I always have to explain, which means like, you start something and you do it too much that like, you sort of get on top of the horse, but you fall to the other side. So like, you need to just slow down and like, kind of enjoy it a little bit. But um, there is there is so many different these different things, and in English as well, I find like you got some things like which you don't really think about, and I don't even think about, it and I just say it. Do do you, do let me know what which one the most pe peculiar is you you'd know, um, because it just uh, the the ones like when I first ever heard it when they said once in a blue moon, and I'm thinking, what what do you mean blue moon? There there is the blue the moon the moon is not blue. <laughs> And there is so many different one. Oh, Tini's asking what's Hungarian for good morning. So if you want to say good morning in Hungarian, you would say Jó reggelt. Jó reggelt. You're going to have your little Hungarian lessons every day. Maybe I could teach you one word every single time. And, you know, if, if I... You, you learn a hundred words of a language, you can go far away with that one. I think I read it somewhere. Um, oh, this was years and years ago that you only need to know about 2000 words in a language to be able to communicate fluently. Because you can use those 2000 words over and over again, although um, you, you like, you know, in a language like there is thousands of words, but um, you only need to know 2000 to communicate fluently. I am almost all the way around and the way how I know I'm almost all the way around because my tail is here so I just know I need to go past my tail and I will I will be all the way around now I could sew my thread off here take my thread of my bobbin and work the other way with my thread that's my like to leave my bobbin on when I do a larger cabochon and perhaps doing it with more rows or it's more raised up not so much flat then I do definitely use the thread from the bobbin when you just do a small one you not necessarily need to just go through I think we are back to the front now I'm using size 11 and size 15 beads. So we started with size 11, that will be around the side of the cabochon. And I'm gonna go into the big one as well now because it's getting harder to get through the 11. So I know I've been all the way around. And I'm using Superlon double A, which is a thinner one of the Superlons. And pull this up. Why well, don't put a knot on me right at the end? Oh, I don't know what's going on with my thread this morning. And there we go. So now I'm going to turn around. So if I just run and just pull a little bit more down, and I'm going to try to get rid of, oh yes, it's twisted up. I'm just going to untwist it quickly. So if I just run, go to the other side, so I just go through any of the beads in front of me. So this is my inner circle that will, my cabochon will sit just in there. So if I just run to the other side, my the direction of my beading is going to be, um, again, stitching from bottom to up on the right hand side. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow so I'm just coming out of that bead I'm just following it the rows diagonally down to the other side can you see I'm just going through the last two and I got to the very tip I'm coming at it doesn't matter which bead you're coming at but you need to come out one of the beads which are sticking out because that's the one can I sort of show you that's the one you need to go through 
and add the bead on the top of it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just pop that cabochon into it and I'm going to hold on to the beadwork and the cabochon itself. So I'm supporting it from underneath with sort of two or three of my fingers. This this properly holding it with my middle finger and my thumb and my ring finger and my index finger is slightly to the side to holding it onto this so it's not going to fall off. And I'm going to go ahead and add the seed beads, the size 15 seed beads on the back to close it in there. So I'm just going to change the color because I want to add rose gold. So the back of it is going to be just rose gold. Oh, don't forget your coffee. Thank you so much for reminding me. I'm going to take a sip. I can't, I don't know. I don't know how some people can just sort of get up in the morning and get going. I need a cup of coffee to wake up. So I'm going to do the same thing here as well. I'm going to go ahead, pick up a seed bead and just go through the next one. And I'm picking up size 15s. Now the way I have it picking up, these are going to slightly sit to the top at this point. But it doesn't really matter because in the next row we're going to pull them into the middle. And I'm just going to run ahead, go ahead and add one into each one of those gaps. Um, Jeannie's saying, I think it's always nice if you are in another country or be able to learn to say please, thank you, good morning or good night. Yes, absolutely. I dibble dabbled into Mandarin as well because we go to China so much. And I can say a few words and ask how much things cost and it goes away. It's so interesting. Like we usually go to China like once a year. Sometimes we go twice, but most of the time we go once. And it's so interesting. Like it goes away. So you come back and and like you don't use it. You don't think about it. And six months later, you really need to think about like, how do I say that? But when you go back out there, within two days, it just it's just back. And, and then you can ask all the questions and understand some certain, to a certain degree what they're saying. I think it's so interesting. And, and like so interesting as well, like people who like speak two languages that like it, it's like I dream in English most of the time or I dream like without a language I would not be able to tell you if it was Hungarian or English but I think I dream mainly in English my husband's always says like oh I'm so lazy because I never learned the language and like you know but I think English is such a great language you go anywhere like we've been like for example when we went to China and we were like it in a town which they you go into McDonald's the point is you go into McDonald's and they speak English you go into you go in anywhere and they do speak English English is so international language that if you speak English you don't really need to learn anything else because you're good Um, Sandra saying, me too, I struggled with it being fiddly. So if you are, um, Kimberly saying, did they speak to you in Cantonese or Mandarin when you were in Hong Kong? So um, Hong Kong is more Cantonese and Mandarin is more towards the north. But what's happening, because Chinese people been moving around such a lot for work, like we go to... Like it's one of the places we go, which is more sort of Cantonese, but because the people, a lot of people are from the north, they will speak Mandarin. So in, in their families, they will speak Mandarin. They can cut, sort of slightly understand each other, but it's not really the same. So it would be like um, Cantonese and Mandarin. Like if you don't know, it's like a difference between like Spanish or French. So they, they have got words what is similar to each other and they can slightly understand each other, but it's kind of a completely different language. Mandarin is more widely spoken than Cantonese, I guess, but Hong Kong is more Cantonese. 
Um, Cambria slang when I live is a language of all of its own for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I think like all like within England as well, you got all sorts of different countries, and then it's like not different counties. With they have their all little not countries counties, <laughs> but they have their little sort of language and say things differently. So Simon's brother they moved up more north to Lincolnshire, and sometimes when they say stuff like they say completely different hair would be say down here down south and I, and I think it's so beautiful all accents are so beautiful unfortunately I am tone deaf so I can't I can't really do accents very well I'm, I'm like I'm horrible at them so I don't I don't even try so I got to do this bead is a little bit blocked oh no that's the size 15 and it didn't want to go through so sometimes you find one or two beads especially if it's galvanized because they are plated that the whole of them is quite small so I usually just put them to the side and either discard them because it's only one one in a hundred or use them with a thinner needle I'm still using size 10 needle so if I need to I can always take my thread and go down to size 11 or 12 needle and then I will be able to go through the beads more. Um, the blue is out of, is, is this color on your website? I can only see red and white with the blue out of stock. Um, Leanne, can you check that with Simon? Because I don't think the blue should be out of stock. Yeah, Leanne, just gonna sort that out for you. Um, Lauren is saying this is where I had trouble beading and keeping the rivoli in um, when I did it before. I managed it, but it was fiddly. Right, so there's a couple of little things you could do. If the beadwork, what you started, is too big, then yes, it's, it's going to be um, moving around with it. I um, For my one, it's just right, so it's not really moving in it anymore because the, the this outer beadwork, which we did in size 11, is the right side to fit the cabochon. If, the, um, if it's really moving around or if you have got the cabochon is sort of really, really slippery, then what you can do as well to put a little masking tape on there and then that will hold everything together. If you're working with stones, they can be really, really slippery as well. So masking tape can be your best friend. And I've just finished that row and I'm stepping into the next row when you're making, when you're bezeling a cabochon. The masking tape is better than sellotape because sellotape can leave the residue of the glue on your cabochon or on your beads. And sellotape is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bead the next row. The sellotape can, um, if your beads are plated, or if your cabochon is plated, um, can as you tearing it off at the end, <laughs> it can take the color up. So be very careful. So use masking tape rather than sellotape. But that, that can help as well to hold everything together. Just to give you a bit of an extra help there. So I'm just going around and you can see as I'm pulling it on now, the 15s are sort of pulling on the other side, other side, the inner side of that little cabochon. Now this is a great kit. So if you never done cabochons before and Simon has given us a discount on it, as he always does, he's really good. This is a really great one to get because you got eight small one and four large one in your kit and just practice it just you know make each one of them up encase them i would sort of batch make them i would encase them all and then i would decide what i'm doing with it so if i'm gonna perhaps add a bail on it or if i'm gonna go ahead and link them together into a necklace or a bracelet but just practice them and like the you know like the, these ones are quite inexpensive and once you master this technique because like it's not just a technique as well it's your tension that you need to sort of get right but because you got 12 cabochons here to encase by the time you finish this kit you will be your work will be very even and your cabochon is going to look really good and then you can go on to and buy more, some of the more expensive stones and create more even more amazing work of 
like pendants, bracelets, or, you know, you, you, you can use, you don't have to link any more together. You can just use one of these in a bracelet and just add a stitching to either side of it. That would look really good as well, like a focal point. You could use this like, you know, just one on a necklace or on an earring, or if I really wanted to, which like I might be able to, hang on one second, what you also could do to make this middle bit. So we got four rows. Remember, we've picked up the, rose gold which was row one and two then we added a couple of row of beading but if you added an extra couple of rows of beading what you could do you could add a, another cabochon from the actually maybe we'll be able to pull this on there another cabochon from the other side so then your beadwork will be double sided and you're just going to go ahead and finish i think i need i would have needed an extra row of 11s just to sort of cater for that thickness at the side. So I'm going to take this out, but you could do that as well. You could make it double sided. So if you want to double sided instead of when you're counting the rows on PO to stitch, you always count across. So I got one, two, three, four, four eleven. So I'm counting across like that. If I'm counting this way, I got one, two sitting next to each other and another two sitting next to each other, but the in, in an angle. So you can, I like to count this way. So I would count one, two, three, four, but you can equally count it like I got two and two. So I, I have to add them up and that's four rows. All right, I'm just gonna take that one out. Um, Kimberly is saying nice, looks nice, double-sided, yes. But practice with these ones because these acrylic cabochons are, are really great. They, you know, relatively inexpensive. And then once you, and they are, are so, so pretty. I love that iridescent finish. I love that flower inside. There's other designs available on the website as well. So do, do have a look at the cabochons themselves and just practice, just have a little practice, just sit down. And just do do a few, and that will. It's always learning, then practice, and perfect. That's why. Oh, that's why I always say. So you're gonna first couple of them. You're gonna be learning the stitch, and then you when you're perfecting it. That's when you sort of more moving on to and paying more attention to your how tight it has to be, your tension, and then they all going to be perfect. Right on the back. Let me just go through this. Oh, a couple of these beads are a little bit, I, I think I need to change to a small needle. My doom, I'm just gonna go and finish this row and see what happens. Sometimes your needle can bend as well a little bit and then it's harder to take it through the beads gonna go through this last one and then I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna go and grab I'm gonna go and grab a smaller needle so this one is size 10 what I've been working with up until now but when you have to go through again and again in the 15s you want to go down in a size you might do I just got a knot on my thread. I don't know what's going on with this thread today. No thread Tuesday, I think. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna start. No thread Tuesday. <laughs> gonna have to do other techniques on Tuesdays. Anything but thread. Let me just get rid of that little knot. So when I'm getting rid of a knot, I'm usually I'm picking it with two needles, not just one, because it's just easier to loosen the knot with two needles. There we go, and then I'm going to go and unreel this as well. Right, let's grab another needle. And I had my little tube here the other day, which I don't know what I did. So we have launched a color eye needles on the website. And in the little tube, and um, if you can grab the link for me, just pop it in there. In the little tube, you get three different colors. And let me just have a look if I have it. I've got a whole box of needles here, but you never got like a whole box of needles. Can you see? But you will never find the right needle. Oh, there we go. I got it. 
So color eye needles, and I was so so pleased about this one because with color eye needles and in the little tube you get is it 15 needles you get? Do you get me is it 12 or 15 needles you get in the little tube? And let me just pull this out. And these these how they look like. So you got one which is size 10, that your your black black eye one is size 10 your turquoise one is size 11 and your red one is size 12 so sometimes you don't need to go down to size 12 because size 12 is a little bit more much more flimsy than size 10 but maybe size 11 is enough so actually i'm gonna go ahead and add that one on it and have a look on the website in the, it comes in a little tube and then you do get I think five of each in there, but do, can can somebody just check it out on the website and let me know? Is it five of each or four of each you get? We have so many different products that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to keep track what's what. Right, so I'm going to add a third row on the back here because I really want to pull this tight. And I want to make sure that my cabochon stays in there. Kitty, color eye beading needles are three sizes, 15 pieces, it's five of each. Yeah, five of each. Leanne just said, just confirmed that it's five of each you have got in the, and how much is that, Leanne? That is 2.99. 2.99 for 15 needles. Size 12, 11, 18. It's, there is five pieces of 10, five pieces of 11, and five pieces of 12 in the little um, tube. So get get one of those. And if you had one of those before from us, oh, Diane has just put the link up. Thank you so much, lovely. He said three sizes, 15 pieces. If you had one of those needles from us, let us know how you find it. Um, I love them because I, I, know, I have ordered, I have had size 11 needles before. And what happened is that I got my little mouse here. I keep calling... I keep calling him a hedgehog because I, I stick my needles in it and bless him is like, like a little porcupine but it's a little mouse so once I stick my and look there is a size a um, couple of size 10 ones because I see the black on the top of it once I stick my needles in there there's no way like if it, I, I kind of by picking it up and flexing it a little bit I can tell the difference between size 10 and size 12 but I can't tell the difference between size 10 and size 11 or size 11 and size 12 because the difference is so little. So by using this color eye ones, you really know what needle is what. But then, but I go through so many needles and see every single time as I'm going around, I'm pulling it tight and even hold down my tail with my thumb so I don't, I'm not letting this thread to travel back in the bead. That's it. And then we're gonna go. So just keep, this is the third row and go around it just to sort of reinforce it. I'm using your color top needles. They are great, Rosie Singh. I found that the color comes off after a while. Yes, because as you pulling it through over and over again in the bead, they get like, you know, the, the, the plating, the color plating on the top of the needle has to be very, very thin. If it was, um, Leanne is saying they're great. If it was any thicker, um, obviously the needle would be thicker as well or it would be quite brittle so um, after a lot of, you have to use it quite a bit the color do, can can come off of it but what I find by the time the color wears off of my needle I wear the needle out anyway because I grip on it so tight that I bend them and then I'm ready ready for a new a new needle um, Dab of nail varnish, you know, he's saying, is that to have to and identify your needle? Uh, Olivia is saying, I had two packs and the third is on order. They are great, though I haven't used many of the size 12s. Oh, maybe what I need to do, ooh, maybe uh, what I'll do, I'll, um, 
I'll ask Simon if he can put the sizes on separately as well. So perhaps you could just get like 15 of the size 11s or 15 of the size 12 or 15 of the size 10s. Because that would be there. Then you could replenish just the size what you use the most. That would be... Gwen is saying I got one like it. Um, Camille is saying I bought those needed twice. Forgot I ordered them, so I ordered them again. Yeah, I do that, Camille, all the time. I'm ordering things twice. Um, and he's saying I always use your needles because I love working with them. I use a new needle every project. They won't come in. Yes, uh, I sometimes like if I'm doing videoing or anything like that. I like to use a brand new needle every single time. <laughs> However, sometimes when you try to bead, there isn't a straight needle in the whole house. <laughs> they all bend. And then you just have to use your bent ones. I can sort of, if you just bent a little bit, slightly bent it or straighten it with some pliers. But after straightening the needle with a pair of pliers, it's never going to be the same as a brand new one. Uh, right, so I'm right down to the end. So would you like me to show you how to do the little strip on the back? Or shall we do a belt go to the front? Or what would you like me to do? And I'm, I know it's 11 o'clock and we are right on the top of the hour, but... Kitty, Simon's updated the blue one. Oh, Simon's updated the blue colorway, so there is more. He, he probably went around in the warehouse and checked it. So with this last stitch, our cabochon is ready. And now all is left to do is to add a little bell going to the back or a little bell. That one's got a little bell on the top. So what's that one? Or where is the one which has, or we could add a bell to go to the back. There was not any more. Um, that, that one. I was looking for samples, was right in front of me. So we could have the bell going on the back. And then when you add this onto a necklace, let me just undo this and I show you. When you add this onto a necklace, come on, go, I should have added the other side through. When you add this onto the necklace, how it's going to sit is that uh, this is what I love that the strands are going to sort of come out from behind the pendant. So I really do love it doing this way, but I equally like to do it. When you add the bail onto the top and and then see it. So let me know. Do you want bail bail on front, please? Bail like lag the bail on top. Um, I use one needle to death before I change to another Angela saying. Yes, strip. Yes, top. Okay. So we are I think most of you want to see it for the top. Um Either way, if you do top or the back, you're gonna start that the same way. Lucy's saying big eye needles for everything she uses. I, I, this once you get used to big eye needles are great as well. So I really want, only want to do. So again, if you want to link it up, then you would start a slightly different way. So with the bell, I'm gonna start with the 15s as I'm coming out of the 15, and I'm gonna make the bell in size 15s as well, just to get that little bit more delicate feeling there. I'm gonna use the rose gold for this. This, so I'm just gonna push this 11s to the side. So I'm gonna use rose gold for this one. If you want to link them together to form a, a pendant or a necklace, um, bit more than one of the cabochons together, then you need to weave your thread right into the middle and that's where you will be adding. So if I show you this one where I added them together, can you see they towards the back, if I turn it that way, but they're not coming out of the size 15, I've woven them, I woven it to the size 11 and that's where I started my little strip, which then that's what's holding them together. I just, I, I like, you can have them quite close to each other, so you can stitch them very close to each other like that, but I do like a little bit of strip between them just to separate them a little bit because then it brings out the natural beauty in all of the cabochons. And you could do like different colors or you could have different cabochons as well there. Right, so we're going to do a bell. So as I'm right here coming out of this size 15, I'm just going to pick up another one, go through the next one, pick up another one, 
go through the next one because I'm going to do a four peyote bell. And instead, I'm going to pick up another one. And instead of going round in a circle, I'm going to turn back on myself. So I'm going to turn and come back on that second one I just added just there. I'm going to pull this tight. And then I'm going to pick up another one and come back through the first one I added. Just like that. So I'm going into starting to create a straight peyote and I'm just going to go backwards and forwards, adding my beads, forming a strip. I'm just going to add a couple more rows and then you can see that... I'm going to stop and oh, actually I can pull it down. You can see this already started forming into a little bit of a strip there. And I'm just going backwards and forwards, adding those beads, holding it on a nice and tight. You only need, you don't, you don't need so many rows here, but you need to make the bell as big as you want to, depending on what necklaces are you planning to use with. If the necklace is going to be somewhat like a chunkier necklace then do your bell bigger if the necklace is going to be like a very small dainty delicate necklace then do your bell smaller i kind the can you see like it's forming i kind of like to pull it away from my beading and just keep going backwards and forwards there and all the way along now if you wanted to go across the back then I would be keep checking as I'm going to how big I have made my strip and you want you don't want it too tight you want like a little bit of slack on it because you want to be able to push the necklace behind it Diane is saying, can this exact same technique be used in a river? Really? Absolutely. You just have to work out your numbers. Like depending over the size of the rivulet you want to make, you're going to pick up more or less beads to start with. Make sure you start with, with even numbers so you can get. And then you can do as many as you want and link them together with rivulets as well. With, if I was doing a Rivoli, maybe I would only do sort of, because the Rivoli has got quite a thin edge. So I would maybe only do, pick up my main row and then just do one more 11. But just experiment to the size because some of them can be a little bit thicker or bigger. But that's how you would... That's how you would start off, pick up a number of beads, put it around it and see if it fits around. Equally, you could start, if you wanted to, and you're working with a Rivoli, equally you could start with a size 15s and pick up the size 15 verse and then increase the sizes of beads and then work your way to the other side. I find when I do something like this, I like to start in the middle because then I'm pulling the beads together and not making them bigger. So they won't pucker. They they will come together nicer and get you get to need to finish. But there's so many different things you could do. We're almost there. I'm just going to add a few more rows. But there's only two beads for each row. So it grows quite quickly here. I'm Julie saying I so needed a refresh on this. So happy you very welcome. We are here Monday, Sunday to well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday every day to showing you all sorts of different techniques. So tune in. But then you can watch it on catch up as well. So I'm almost there. I think I need, if I wanted to go across, see, I still would have needed a few more beads. I 
size 15 is like you know and, and i'm not picking up the beads i'm not like picking them up and bringing them to the needle i am i have got like a fleecy material on the table and i'm just stabbing them with my needle and that's how they get on the needle very easily and very quickly so sometimes people think oh size 15s are too small to work with they are i don't find them harder than size 11s but it's just i've sort of just poked at them with my needle and they jump on the needle by themselves i'm just gonna add let's see now yeah, so if I wanted to do straight across, I would do like this would be the the size flat. So I would add another couple of rows so I have like a little bit of curve behind it so I can add my necklace on it. Because I want we said we're gonna do a bell, the bell is gonna come up to the top and then it's gonna curl back and we're gonna link it into those size 11. So I am gonna go ahead and add a couple more rows here as well, just to have a nice, a little bit bigger bell. Don't wanna make it too big. You don't wanna make it, like you, you, wanna, you want it proportionate enough to your pendant as well. Right, so let's have a look. So I'm gonna turn it back on itself and then I'm gonna, where we go? So it's coming out of that one. So I wanna link into this one. So I need to go back um, and add a half, like one more row, because can you see as I'm putting them together, the sticky out beads on this strip is meeting with the sticky out beads on the, the pendant itself. And I go back and add another row and you can see the sticky out beads. And this is a ter this is like a terminology I use all the time. The sticky out beads are gonna be in line with the beads on the top of the cabochon, which are don't stick out and they are further in like so I just Pull this in, turn it around. So now, can you see they're gonna fit really nicely in with each other? So the ones which are stick out on descent are gonna go in with the ones which are further in the end. Then all I need to do as I'm coming out of this 15 here, I'm just gonna go through the 11 and pull this up nice and tight. Then I'm gonna go back through. So I'm zigging it, zagging it up. I'm gonna go back through the bell, just one seed bead. And I'm going to come back to the front and go through the, well, the, top, the, the top of the cabochon and go through the one of the base rows and then go back to the bell and I zipped it up. Now I'm going to pull this apart so you can see the thread path underneath it. Let me just stick a pen inside it. So you can really see the thread path. This might be a bit too thick, this pen. Let's get something thinner. You know, or this one will do. This one will be good enough. So can you see like from one side, we just sort of go backwards and forwards with our heavy pulling this all together. And then I'm going to pull this nice and tight and just go into the next bead on my cabochon. And I do like to go around. I do like to sort of go around the cabochon one more time. And all is it left to do is to work your thread off and that's it. You are, you are good to go. You're ready to well, I'm wearing the tail end of the You're ready to wear your pendant. So let me know in the comments, was that easier or was that harder what you thought? Did you imagine it? this would be much harder to make when we first started or did you, did you have you found it easy? 
is there is have you got any questions is there anything you want me to explain again there we go Lian is saying such a great thank you. Yes, it's such a great and easy technique. And it's so, so like, you know, I think it's so satisfying to see nice little seed beads around the cabochon as well. How many size 11s did you start with on your cabochon? So we picked up 42 beads for this size of the cabochon. That was row one and two. And then we added another two rows. So row three and four. What's the difference between Rivoli? Cabochon, please, never done this before. L give me one second and I pick up a Rivoli and I'll show you. There we go. We got, I've got one just right here on the side. So Rivoli, which is like this, it's again a circular shape and it's, um, it's domed to the front. So it comes to the point to the front, but it comes a point to the back as well. So can you see from sideways, this, this is a Rivoli. On the cabochon is doming at the front, but it can have a flat back. So when you're making pendants or when you're making components out of this one, this one is going to have a nice flat back and it's going to sit really nice and tight. And the Rivoli, can you see there's always one to sit to an angle because of that point, pointy back. So that's the difference between this is a flat back cabochon and this is a Rivoli where there's both of the sides. Now, Rivolis comes in so many si different sizes and shapes. This one is a 16 mil round. Is it 16 or 18 mil? I know. I I'll always forget which one is which. Let me just sort of very quickly measure it. 18 mil. So this is an 18 mil round um, Rivoli, and this is a flat back capuchon. So that's the difference between them. If you if you put the beads across the back, question from Lorna, could you then make a peyote strap thin enough to allow you to thread the bazzled cabochon so it's not so it would be interchangeable? You could do you could do all sorts of different things because like if you have a strip on the back like this one, and I did a wide bracelet, a wide bracelet, I could then add this on the top of the bracelet and then take it off. I haven't, just imagine, <laughs> imagine this is a wide bracelet. So we could add it on there and then take it off. So you could do that. That would That's a really good idea as well. Um, yes, it can be used for Rivoli as well. So you could use exactly the same technique. I would start exactly the same, picking up the seed beads, working out what I need around the circumference. Let me just zoom in on this. What I need around the circumference of the Rivoli and then do exactly the same, taper it down to the size 15s and then taper it down on the other side as well. Go on the other side and taper it down. And that's how to capture them as well. Uh, all the colors are back on stock on the website so go and have a look simon has given us a discount uh, at the moment and um, we got iridescent blue which is that one we got the red and then we got this really lovely which is just called iridescent um colors as well i love these ones because like you get all that shimmer on them all that sparkle on them and there is not just one color inside the cabochon so you can use it with so many different colors as well and if you score, if you go into the cabochon itself and scroll down, then you can see the colors of the seed beads. But um, they are moving the table hand. Um, you can um, have a look what seed beads I have chosen because um, I've taken away that darker color. <laughs> uh, it just had to be done. I've taken out this darker color from the iridescent and added the rose gold in, and I think that just looks so so nice with it. So I just like it's like last night I just had to change it. It just had to be done. The um adding the rose gold in. And in the red one as well, I added the the galvanized gold seed beads. So they're gonna look really, really great as well. You get a PDF, which is a, a four-page PDF with your instruction. Step by step is gonna show you, it's gonna talk you through how to make the shape, smaller one and larger one, and then it will show you how to if you want to link them together, you can. So you could do this version as well. Let's just zoom out a little bit because I'm so 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 I'm showing so little of this table. 
So you could do either this one when you link them together to find the form, like for example, a front of a necklace, or you could just have that as a pendant. You could have like a large one and a small one dangling down for it, or you could have each one of them separately as a pendant, you could do that as well. All sorts of different things, really just play. But um, what I love about this kit is that it comes with four large one and eight small one. So you have a lot and a lot of beads there to practice and perfect your technique. So do give it a try. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sarah Payne is going to be... Is the red kit or the so there is a red one on the website there, there, there is a blue there's the Idris and there is a red one the red one comes with like let me just I'll show you on the website very quickly the red one comes with gold and red beads so I wanted to and actually that's the one which is just showing on the light let's go here so this is the red kit if I go up to the top um, I called it winter flower because it's sort of like a snowflake that's what sort of represents for me on there and then those are the beads I added with it so I added the red one and I and added gold one to go with the kit as well so because when you look at it um, in real life the pendant is red but it's called a gold shine on the top of it and I think the by adding the gold beads with it it will just really really highlight it so have a look at that one but there is the other two kits on there as well and um, there is iridescent blue iridescent red and um, the iridescent as well so these are how the prices are different they are the prices of the beads and uh, you get the PDF free um, with the instructions the the instructions comes free the pdf comes with free with the beads as well so i hope you enjoyed today um sarah payne is going to be with you tomorrow and she is doing a spectacle holder uh with a tree of life motive on the front do tune on do tune in for that one because i'm i'm so excited that one as well i, do, I only wear sunglasses but um i really i think um i'm gonna make one of those because they looked really really good Right, thank you everybody. Have a great day. I will be if you if you are on the beat club, then I see you on Thursday night and Friday morning. And I'm just gonna show you if you're not in a beat club, I need to show you this. Do go ahead. <laughs> I have tidied up and put everything away from my desk and now I, I need them back. I need them back to show you what is the other one. So before you go, don't go yet, don't go yet. Stay <laughs> before you go. I'm gonna show you this. So this is what we're doing. Um, this, hold on, come away from the side. This is what we're doing in the bead club this weekend. We're going to do a beaded chain. I love, I really, really love this design because it's we're using check brick beads and we're going to create this chain in the middle. And I just and I and I love and I keep sort of sitting there and moving it around and how that moves. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. So you can do that the chain goes along. Um, in between your your bricks or you can do that your chain and did slightly larger loops on this one but it goes that way as well so there's either way I'm going to show you both ways this Thursday so if you do fancy that do sign up for the beat club you can just sign up for one lesson or you can become a member as well and then that will give you the access Actually, let's do it on the other hand that will give you the access to every single class we do with the beat club let me just zoom in on this one I, I really do love this technique and you might think this is really really difficult but in theory it's very very easy technique and I will show you and um, we'll show you how to do it so do check that one out as well it's beatclub.co.uk and Lucy just popped the link up um, and this is going to be this Thursday evening at 7 p.m and Friday at 12 at lunchtime so we just it's a it goes on for a couple of hours it's really nice we've got a such a lo lovely class and you know it's just like we sit there and beat it's a little bit longer than our facebook live so we can really sort of um just chat and and do a bit of beading right everybody have a great great week and i will be back on sunday um with somebody <laughs> um for sunday beaders i'm not gonna say who it is i'm gonna keep you guessing she does the most amazing embroidery piece pieces i really really loved it
Ruthie saying, can I do beat club on a catch up basis? I'm not able to commit to do times. So if you are the part of the beat club, and that's what the great thing about this, it works at eight pound per per Zoom lesson. So for two hours of lesson, you, you're paying eight pounds for it. However, if you miss one and you can't join it live, then what you can do is we got a private Facebook group for each one of the clubs and what you do is you go into that group and every single lesson is recorded and we put the link in that um, the video is posted into that group so you can go back and watch it and you can if you if, even if like you were in the beat club but you couldn't like you, you needed a little more practice you can go back and re-watch the video until you get it and also pdfs and everything's uploaded there as well so that's that that's what's great about becoming a member so if you just sign up one off then like you get to join the class but that's it but if you become a member then you head into that group and you can re-watch the videos and like you know they they everybody in that group is doing the same thing every single week as you so if you have got any problems i'm in there a lot they can really really help you out right okay bye everybody i'll see you on sunday with my sunday beater and or i'll see you in a beat club on thursday in fact thursday or friday have a lovely week everybody i might be doing a creation station on saturday evening like i did a few weeks before on my channel but uh, i will um I, I i have to have to work out my diary first so if i am i will let you know right bye everybody see you later bye have a lovely lovely